Welcome back to 60 Minutes. The tragic tackle which has left rising rugby league star Alex McKinnon with a broken neck and the prospect of never being able to walk again is a sobering reminder of just how unforgiving spinal injuries can be. John McLean knows it better than anyone. 25 years ago, he too was an up-and-coming footy player. But while on a training ride, a truck smashed into him, leaving John paralysed from the waist down. Life in a wheelchair hasn't held him back, but John has never given up hope of walking again. Now John's achieving things that are astounding the medical world. And as Georgie Gardner discovered, he is redefining what might be possible for people with spinal injuries. This is the John McLean we've known for the past 25 years. A man largely defined by his wheelchair. But never confined by it. Here we go. Isn't that Andrew? We're in the corner. Especially when it comes to keeping up with his son, three year old Jack. Whoa! Get the hole. The wheelchair, friend or foe? That's a really good question. Um, never really considered that. The wheelchair is, for me, I would say like it's a, it's a friend, it's a part of me. So if I don't have the wheelchair, then I'm not able to go outside, I'm not able to do things. So I guess it's an extension of myself. And extend himself is something John has always done. Pushing the limits of what can be achieved as a paraplegic. But even he couldn't imagine the transformation that lay ahead. And he said, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, oh, I'd like to walk. And he then said, well, you should be able to walk. And then he said, well, let's, let's see what we can do. Over the past year, John McLean has confounded medical experts with what he's been able to do. The degree of his recovery is beyond my wildest dreams. And in the process, he's joining the new frontier in spinal research. This is not science fiction. This is the stuff that is being explored around the world right now. What we need to do is get our foot firmly in the door and wedge it open and allow this to happen for a lot more people. John McLean was born to be a champion. All his young life, he loved to run. John McLean has represented SG Ball and also Jersey Flake teams. By the age of 22, he was an up-and-coming rugby league player with a newfound passion for triathlon. But in June 1988, it all came to a screeching halt. John was on a training ride along Sydney's M4 motorway when a truck smashed into him. I broke my back in three places, my pelvis in four places, right arm in two places, uh, fractured sternum, broken ribs, punctured lungs. There's a lot of damage done, but in particular the damage to the spinal cord at T12, which is about your belly button height, that's where my spinal cord had been, had been damaged. You were a mess. Absolutely, yeah. I was, um, I was near death. He was a man who'd had a very horrendous accident where a lot of force had come towards him and this then meant that there was damage to the spinal cord. The question was, how much damage? Professor John Yeo is one of Australia's most respected spinal specialists. He looked after John McLean in the four months he was in hospital. John was an excellent patient, very keen, of course, to do everything. And he had lots of physio and occupational therapy and indeed made plans to make the most use of what he had. But the wheelchair was still going to be a big part of his life. John emerged from hospital with just 25% function in his left leg. His right was practically useless. He could stand for short periods, but walking was impossible. I hated the wheelchair. I wanted to run again, so that's why I tried so hard. But eventually I accepted the fact that I'm going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. But not one to take life sitting down, John embarked on the toughest challenges he could dream up. Hey, Mark. 
He was the first wheelchair athlete to complete the Hawaiian Ironman. The first to swim the English Channel. McLean's pushing hard here, the Aussie. But I and he twice record. represented Australia as a Paralympian, winning silver. Whether it's paddling or rowing or wheelchair racing or, you know, triathlon, you know, he's into it 100%. It, that's just what he does. For wife Amanda, just keeping up with John's zest for life is a challenge in itself. John, I mean, he just walks with wheels. You know, he, he's always been, you know, He's so completely independent and I think anyone who is in a relationship with a wheelie, it sounds a silly thing, but you, you kind of don't see the wheelchair. Look at that finish line, Aiden. John has been a trailblazer and an inspiration for so many in wheelchairs. But the sad fact is that for those with serious spinal injury, medical science has struggled to find a cure. We've done good, we've done good. Thank you. In Australia, one person a day has a spinal cord injury and most of those people end up in the spinal cord ward being told that they're never going to walk again, they'll never have bowel function, they'll never have bladder function, they'll never have sexual function, they're going to have troubles controlling their body. So what we're trying to look at at the moment is... But new discoveries are offering new hope Dr. Bryce Vissel is head of neurodegeneration research at the Garvin Institute. He says world-leading studies into how the nervous system can fix itself may revolutionise spinal treatment. I think this is the new evolving idea of what's called neural plasticity. The nervous system has tremendous capacity for its self-repair. How far are we in the pursuit? Are we just scratching the surface? All great science begins with the initial observations and what we're seeing is that some people with partial spinal cord injury are showing the possibility of recovery. The consequence of that is that we begin to look at people like John McLean and say you know you've had a little bit of spinal cord function left together with intensive exercise which stimulates the nerves below the injury sends signals to the brain we're able to the, the nervous system is able to recover some of its function what was your favorite animal at the zoo um, elephant. Elephant. in this new medical frontier john makes for the perfect candidate his spinal cord is still partly intact and he has the drive and discipline of an elite athlete but even super motivated John McLean needed someone to convince him that after all these years, he just might walk again. It's a moment, right, to say to a person who's been in a wheelchair for 25 years, oh, I think you can walk without that person thinking you're a crazy person. What was his reaction? Well, he sort of looked at me and he said, oh, well, I, I trust you. He said, so let's run with that. That's noisy there, mate, so just got to let that noise get out of there. Sports coach and therapist Ken Ware set about building John's strength and coordination to make the most of any connections in John's spinal cord. All I want is that thought process. And, just as crucially, Ken worked on John's mind. Get a good picture in your mind of what you're trying to accomplish. Ken has this wonderful ability to make you feel relaxed and at ease and getting really clear on what it is that you want. So that's the goal and it's about letting go of things that hold you back from that. And let go, he did. He said, if you want to learn to walk, you better start putting your foot down. Those first steps last May were tentative, but definite. And gradually, one step after the other, then things were happening which oh, I couldn't explain. Can you remember what he said? So where to from here? That was the question. So where to from here, coach? So just pick that. Now, less than a year later... And just his chin up, chest out, shoulders back, and just walk straight to that box. This is a man who can walk again. It just keeps getting more extraordinary. I mean, I wouldn't believe it unless it was happening to me. And that's not all John can do. 
I stop smiling, George. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> it's infection. <laughs> Incredibly, John is even trying to run. That's the way. Go, go, go. Come on. <laughs> Your arms tucked in. That's it. Tuck them in. <laughs> <laughs> the determination in his face, I mean, it just says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. He's just so in the moment, and it's almost like a meditative state. He just has that enormous self-belief and incredible focus. Beautiful. Ask the finish line, don't you finish lines. So when you see what we're seeing today, you must be marvelling at it. I am marvelling at it. And I'm pleased, of course. And I want to know uh, how we might anticipate that in perhaps other patients in the future. Today, Professor John Yeo is looking for answers from the 3D images of an MRI scan, a glimpse into what's going on in John McLean's spinal cord. So that's, we need to cover the cervical and thoracic spine, that should be enough. Okay. Radiologist Dr David Brazier runs the MRI unit at Sydney's Royal North Shore Hospital. I just want to come in here. You can see here that this is the, the cross-section of the cord. Yes. The white area is the damaged cord, you can see here. And, and this is the tiny little bit of cord here that remains. Well, but that's, that's enough, at least in your case, obviously, for you to have some function. And I'm, to be honest, I'm amazed at seeing you just walk forward there, because there's still quite a lot of damage. Our interpretation of this is that it's not regeneration that John is getting recovery of function, it's a re-synapsing, an opening up of pathways, John, that I think is what's working for you. Either way, you're just going to be pleased, aren't you, with the result? Absolutely. Whether it's one or the other. Yep. What have you learnt from John McLean's progress? Ah, oh, what have I learnt? I've learnt that miracles happen. You view it as a miracle? I think it's a miracle. For John and his family, this miracle has opened up a world of possibilities. And often it's the simplest of pleasures that prove the most rewarding. Like walking on the beach hand in hand. Has he changed on the inside? He has, actually. He's always been driven, but I Absolutely. guess this takes it to a whole new level. Yeah, it has. It's a lot more personal, maybe. It's not so much a, a sporting achievement. This is a very personal goal um, and something he's always strived to get back to. So I guess that's a difference. He's, it's just very personal to him. But there's one piece of unfinished business. Today, for the first time, John is walking back to the place where he became a paraplegic. I'm so lucky to... I'm so lucky to be alive. It's cathartic, absolutely, and confronting, but at the same time, almost therapeutic, because, you know, I'm, I'm standing, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting. I'm, I'm getting a, a chance to, to literally walk away. And you're in charge. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm running my race again. And go! John McLean is back on track. And true to form, he's setting new, ever more ambitious goals. Another triathlon, this time as an able-bodied athlete. Even by John McLean's standards, this just might be his greatest challenge yet. Oh. Oh. Well done. That's well, you running 100 metres. Yes, well, it's uh, doing my best not to fall over. <laughs> some stuff. I get the feeling that you're incredibly content with where you're at. Yeah, life's, life's fantastic. I've got a beautiful wife. I've got an amazing little boy. And what more could you ask for? Well, you're up on your feet and you're walking. I am a walking Mayan. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish John the best of luck as he trains for the Nepean Triathlon to be held in October this year.